Okay, so today is Saturday, right? Saturday. And this is video 169. I'm still working on the caffeine table designs. Um, so I'm just gonna keep on working, and I'm gonna just listen to some stuff, and if anybody kind of pops in, I'll try to answer. Otherwise, I'm just gonna do my thing. So I've been listening to some Lex Friedman, so I'm gonna keep on doing that. Somewhat, yeah. I think that a lot of this stuff is just derived from a biological perspective. I feel like these things are in, innate within us. Do like, you think our innately humans are good? Like we? No, <laughs> I don't. I feel like I also feel like there's the issue of scale too. Like, um, like Nassim Taleb likes to talk about how he views his the way he interacts with with groups in terms of scale. You know, what is this thing about like at a at the familial level, I'm a, I'm a communist, and then at the, the civic level, I'm a, I'm a Republican or something, and at this other level, I'm a, and then it goes on, at the widest level, he's a libertarian or something of that nature, you know? Let's see where we're gonna put chat. I guess we could put chat over here. Yeah. <clears throat> That way I can full screen this. Take some timestamps. Talk about how he views his the way he interacts with with groups in terms of scale. You know, what is this thing about? Like at a the familial level, I'm a I'm a communist, and then at the the civic level, I'm a I'm a Republican or something, and at this other level, I mean, and then it goes on at the widest level, he's a libertarian or something of that nature, you know? Like, fundamentally, human interaction changes... On scale. On scale. And scale, and also uh, from, uh, you know, subjective to the environment around them. So, and I don't even mean environment just in the sake of physical environment, uh, nature, right? Like, nature's constantly trying to murder you. Well, it's not really trying, it's just... Yeah, I think that a lot of this stuff is just derived from a biological perspective. I feel like these things are in, innate within us. Do you like, think our innately humans are good? Like we? No, <laughs> I don't. I feel like, I also feel like there's an issue of scale too. Like, um, like Nassim Taleb likes to talk about how he views his, the way he interacts with, with groups in terms of scale views his the way he interacts with with groups in terms of scale you know what is this thing about like at a at the familial level I'm a, I'm a communist and then at the the civic level I'm a, I'm a Republican or something and at this other level I'm a, and then it goes on at the widest level he's a libertarian yeah I think that a lot of this stuff is just derived from a biological perspective I feel like these things are in, innate within us do you think our innately humans are good like we no <laughs> I don't I feel like I also feel like there's the issue of scale too like um, like Nassim Taleb likes to talk about how he views his the way he interacts with with groups in terms of scale you know what is this thing about like at a at the familial level I'm a, I'm a con things are in, innate within us. Do you like, think our innately humans are good? Like we... No. <laughs> I don't. I feel like... I also feel like there's an issue of scale, too. Like, um, like Nassim Taleb likes to talk about how he views his... the way he interacts with, with groups in terms of scale. You know, what is this thing about? Like, at a at the familial level, I'm a, I'm a communist, and then at the, the civic level, I'm a... Republican or something at this other level, I'm a, and then it goes on at the widest level, he's a libertarian or something of that nature, you know? Like fundamentally, human interaction changes on scale. On scale. And scale, and also uh, from uh, you know, subjective to the environment around them. So, and I don't even mean environment just in the sake of physical environment, uh, nature, right? Like nature is constantly trying to murder you. Well, it's not really trying, it's just. Nature is constantly trying to murder you. Well, it's not really trying. 
trying. It's just nature's being nature. Yeah. The universe is the universe, and uh, at times it takes you out. It just not with any particular uh, compunction or prejudice. It just oops, you know. Sorry, there's no more dodos. Uh, my bad. But don't you think the particular flavor of the complexity that is the human mind was created like? Let me make an argument for that pe all people are fundamentally good. <laughs> okay. Is uh, there's an evolutionary advantage to being, to striving to uh, cooperate, mm -hmm. to add more love to the world mm -hmm. of like compassion, empathy, all mm -hmm. that kind of stuff. And that the very thing that created the human mind was this evolutionary advantage. Whatever the forces behind mm -hmm. this evolutionary advantage. And At that, scale, yes. So when we're dealing with a small tribe, sure. Yeah. When you meet another tribe, maybe. There's other factors that are going into that. Let's say scale up, and so your 150 has exceeded their 150, and like you start to get to a certain point where um, you can't really be close enough to someone down the line of some of, of that next, like that 150s, 150, 150. 150 and they just now all of a sudden become some some guy, whatever. And when it comes to some guy, at once it starts hitting scale, I don't know that it's capable. I, people can be as as magnanimous to the, a stranger as to the known if they orient themselves to be secure enough, because it, it does come to security, insecurity, in one way or the other, either brought on by the unknown brought on by an actual threat, brought on by even their own, as we would use the word insecurity, in that their own insecurity within their own capabilities, their own belief in themselves. All these things um, can change things from being compassionate and what have you to at least, at the very least, maybe not evil, but self-interest driven to the point of a negative results for those that aren't, you know what I mean? But another way to frame that is uh, maybe it's less about scale and more about the amount of resources available. So if we're overflowing with resources in terms of uh, security and safety, all the uh, things you mentioned, if we have more than enough resources, then the way we treat a stranger, the way we position ourselves towards that stranger might be in a way that uh, allows us to be our real human selves as opposed to sort of our animal self and therefore it's mostly about how clever can we descendants of apes be in coming up with all cool kinds of technologies and ways to uh, efficiently use the resources we have such that we're not constrained and my hope is that we can that human innovation mm -hmm. will outpace the growth of our the n number of people that are starving for resources Yes, uh, I think that there's a lot of uh, rationality behind uh, this argument, and you know, in, in some ways I agree, and in, in, in a lot of ways I see it as missing the point of, of, of how this experiment has, has been playing out across time. When you look at uh, what, re, what, for one, it's like defined resources. You know, what is a what is a, a resource of, of as humans? Uh, would would define it right or wealth even and so you can say well you know an iPhone's a resource the internet's a resource uh, water obviously is a resource but if we weigh them what is more important to human beings water internet or iPhones it's water right so if we look at resources if we start with what do human beings need to live I mean actually live not live here in this bullshit fantasy creation extension of our own ingenuity and you know a prison of our own creation and also a paradise of our own creation but this is not how human beings normally live this is all built upon stuff on, on this is built on concept on idea and some and and some of it's built on just well this is the paradigm so this is what you do human beings need food they need water to survive they need shelter from the elements and they need certain skills to perpetuate these things and be able to pass them down so that they can, so that these things don't become, uh, you don't end up in this, this gap where you have to relearn things. Because if, if it's lost, 
then th that time before you can get it back again is going to be a, a dark ages of sorts, you know, or it's going to be de highly detrimental to, to your group because not knowing how to fish, not knowing how to hunt, not knowing how to even clean and cook the game once you have it could be lethal. That's fascinating to think of that as a basic resource, the knowledge to attain the very low level things of water. Right, and we'll figure it out. We yeah. did it once before, and we've done it over and over and over and over again. It's just costly. Yeah, well, yes, it has costs, for sure. Um, but when you think of how you look at the... Well, we'll just deal with the first world of the West. You look at the the, the path line, the pathway of, of Western civilization and its growth, and then you look at how technology injected into it over time how it magnifies uh, things, or how it pushes things at, at uh, orders of magnitude faster. And then the internet comes along, and even faster, you know. So you're watching Industrial Revolution to, what is it, the, uh, the capacitor, and then so on. It goes further and further. And as the internet and technology, especially on the electronic side of things, start increasing in capability, it massively outpaces even our necessity for it at times it becomes you know plant obsolescence happens quicker and over and over and over again and wealth increases 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 in terms of the things that we're able to acquire right i mean you i've seen homeless people with smartphones you know so we're living in the most wealth laden luxury laden age of all of humanity yet what happens when we see calamity or people go on hard time? What are the, they, the things that they value? You know, what what, is, what do people go to an argument about the cost of things that are luxury items generally and not necessity items? You know, we get into fights about uh, things that are, at the end of the day, not necessities to us. You know, people are so concerned about Netflix and, and the internet and. Uh, Personally, I'm very concerned about the internet because I look at it as my own little personal library of Alexandria in the pocket. That's what I love about it. And the ability to have a tool as effective as it is, even though I'm in a constant battle, to not let that tool become a vice or to become something that that actually brings me to a lower state. <laughs> but are we will the question is over the are we willing to murder each other over Netflix versus murder each other over water? We're willing to murder each other over water. That's a given. Right, know? but that's our animalistic selves. Of, that's well, it's also a necessity for, it's animalistic, but it's also either you do it or you don't, right? Like, unless somebody's willing to share that water or if that water is of such a limited uh, uh, capability or of such a limited amount, then you will have to murder right. to have right. that water. And that's what like the argument is the higher you get up to this hierarchy of what we consider in Los Angeles yeah. resources, yes, we were, we're less we're, willing to be to commit violence. Yes. We are less willing to commit violence, than, oh, I would say, over Netflix, but we are willing to commit violence over Netflix, over everything associated with Netflix, over televisions, over sneakers, over, over uh, you know, I mean, when we look at uh, a good, a, I mean, the majority of the stuff that came with the riots, I mean, it was used car dealerships, uh, targets. I mean, and then you look, and it's like, well, okay, well, what are people, what do they got to, what are they so hell bent to get out of this whole thing? And I'm even talking about the ideological elements or anything like that. Just like, okay, something's going on, boom, looting, whatever. Yeah. We, you know, stuff. What, what are you going to loot? Yeah. You know, you'll have AOC say, oh, people need bread. Hey, I didn't see a single loaf of bread. You know, I saw you know, televisions it's and poetry, shoes. poetry, Josh. And, you know, but. To me, it is poetry in a sense because you get to see who we, how we actually are operating. You know, what, what are where, what is becoming first principles to most people. But wait, wait. But you could also argue that those riots were more like the madness of crowds. Which is oh, like, it's definitely a lot more than just that. I'm just saying that given a chance, it's like okay, boom, the the lights are off, the grid is down, we've, we've hacked into the whole system, <laughs> turned into an 80s movie, and you have the ability to go get a hold of whatever it is that you think is most important. And what do we do? And I say we, as in, you know, including all of us, we grab a TV, we, we attack it, we, we, we break into a sneaker store on Melrose. We do, it's like, 
Uh, we still giant cause statues, or the value of that is completely market driven. Like, it's just a piece of polypropylene or whatever, butyl, and you know, it's cool. You know, I, I'm a big fan of art, uh, but uh, like, <laughs> you know, I can't eat that. And at the end of the day, man, you're sitting there with your, with your like, what'd you do today, honey? What'd you get? You know, man, we, we were able to, you know, oh, I got this. I got this designer art statue. <laughs> are, yeah. are, are you gonna go? Well, you can't really sell it on the on like the art markets where people are really gonna pay for it. So, are you gonna become an underground art dealer with your one piece of cause art? One interesting thing, so before I forget it, you mentioned the Library of Alexandria yeah. and your phone. Well, your phone, <laughs> but also just thinking of your little world that you're creating for yourself on the internet. It's a really powerful way to actually raise it. One of the things that uh, You've been on Joe Rogan several times. I'm Although always everybody always comes to me. Oh, that was so great. He didn't know. You, you're on, you've been on Joe Rogan? I go, this is like my fifth time, dude. I've been a fan of yours for a long time from uh, from other avenues. Yeah, this is a long time coming, actually. Everybody, yeah. you have no idea. Like how many times through uh, messaging and missing each other over the years. This is ridiculous. This is a long time coming. You don't realize how special this is for us. This is a, well, I'm also starstruck. We'll talk about this, but you symbolize something very important to me through my journey, through wrestling, through jujitsu, through judo, through just street fighting, through just combat. There's a, you're the, in some sense, the devil on my shoulder of like, of violence in a good, in the, in, in a, Devil gets a bad rap. He does, he does get a bad <laughs> rap. I realize, you know, sitting encased in, in ice down at that, that low. These narratives that we construct for ourselves as we evolve, and that thread is grounded in some kind of absolute ideas of maybe on the morality side, which is the trickiest one of good and evil. Somewhat, yeah. I think that a lot of this stuff is just derived from a biological perspective. I feel like these things are in, innate within us. Do right? you think our innately humans are good? Like we no, <laughs> I don't. I feel like I also feel like there's the issue of scale too. Like, um, like Nassim Taleb likes to talk about how he views his the way he interacts with with groups in terms of scale. You know, what is this thing about? Like at a at the familial level, I'm a I'm a communist, and then at the the civic level, I'm a I'm a Republican or something and at this other level and then it goes on at the widest level he's a libertarian or something of that nature you know like fundamentally human interaction change Level, I'm a, I'm a Republican or something at this other level, I mean, and then it goes on at the widest level. He's a libertarian or something of that nature, you know. Like fundamentally, human interaction changes on scale. Uh, what is this thing about? Like at a, a familial level, I'm a, I'm a communist, and then at the, the civic level, I'm a, I'm a Republican or something at this other level, and then it goes on at the widest level. He's a libertarian or something of that nature, you know. Like fundamentally, human interaction changes on scale, on scale, and scale, and also uh, from uh, you know subjective to the environment around them. So, and I don't even mean environment just in the sake of physical environment, uh, nature, right? Like nature is constantly trying to murder you. Well, it's not really trying; it's just nature's being nature. <laughs> yeah. The universe is the universe. And uh, at times it takes you out. It's just not with any particular uh, compunction or prejudice. It's just, oops, you know, sorry, there's no more dodos. Uh, my bad. But don't you think the particular flavor of the complexity that is the human mind was created? Like, let me make an argument for that pe all people are fundamentally good. <laughs> okay. Is uh, there's an evolutionary advantage to being, to striving to uh, cooperate, mm -hmm. to add more love to the world mm -hmm. of like compassion, empathy, all mm -hmm. that kind of stuff. And that the very thing that created the human mind was this evolutionary advantage. What are the forces behind mm -hmm. this evolutionary advantage? And At scale, yes. So <laughs> when we're dealing with a small tribe, sure. Yeah. When you meet another tribe, maybe. There's other factors that are going into that. Let's say 
you scale up, and so your 150 has exceeded their 150, and like you start to get to a certain point where um, you can't really be close enough to someone down the line of some of, of that next, like that 150s, 150, 150, 150, and they just now all of a sudden become some, some guy, whatever. And when it comes to some guy, at once it starts hitting scale, I don't know that it's capable. I, people can be as as magnanimous to the, a stranger as to the known, if they orient themselves to be secure enough, because it, it does come to security, insecurity, in one way or the other, either brought on by the unknown, brought on by an actual threat, brought on by even their own, as we would use the word insecurity, in that their own insecurity within their own capabilities, their own belief in themselves, all these things um, can change things from being compassionate and what have you, to at least, at the very least, maybe not evil, but self-interest driven to the point of a negative results for those that aren't, you know what I mean? Right. But another way to frame that is uh, maybe it's less about scale and more about the amount of resources available. So if we're overflowing with resources in terms of uh, security and safety, all the uh, things you've mentioned, if we have more than enough resources, then the way we treat a stranger, the way we position ourselves towards that stranger might be in a way that uh, allows us to be our real human selves as opposed to sort of our animal self. And therefore, it's mostly about how clever can we descendants of apes be in coming up with all cool kinds of technologies and ways to uh, efficiently use the resources we have so that we're not constrained. And my hope is that we can, that human innovation mm -hmm. will outpace the growth of our, the n number of people that are starving for resources. Yes, uh, I think that there's a lot of uh, rationality behind uh, this argument. And you know, in, in some ways I agree, and in a, lo in a lot of ways I see it as missing the point of, uh, of, of how this experiment is, has been playing out across time. When you look at uh, what, re what if, for one, it's like defined resources. You know, what is a, what is a, a resource of, of, as humans uh, would, would define it, right? Or wealth, even. And so you can say, well, you know, an iPhone's a resource, the Internet's a resource, uh, water obviously is a resource, but if we weigh them, what is more important to human beings? Water, Internet, or iPhones? is water, right? So if we look at resources, if we start with what do human beings need to live? I mean, actually live. Not live here, in this bullshit fantasy creation extension of our own ingenuity and you know a prison of our own creation and also a paradise of our own creation but this is not how human beings normally live this is all built upon stuff on on So I think I lost my internet. <sighs> Should have downloaded that while I was watching it. All right, well let's let's just keep on going. We live. Not live here in this bullshit fantasy creation extension of our own ingenuity and you know a prison of our own creation and also a paradise of our own creation but this is not how human beings normally live this is all built upon stuff on on uh, <laughs> or iphones it's water right so if we look at resources if we start with 
What do human beings need to live? I mean, yeah, or iPhones, it's water, right? So if we look at resources, if we start with what do human beings need to live? Water obviously is a resource, but if we weigh them, what is more important to human beings? Water, internet, or iPhones? It's water, right? So if we look at resources, if we start with what do human beings need to live? I mean, actually live. Not live here in this bullshit fantasy. live here in this bullshit fantasy creation extension of our own ingenuity and you know a prison of our own creation and also a paradise of our own creation but this is not how human beings normally live this is all built upon stuff on on this is built on concept on idea and some and and some of it's built on just well this is the paradigm so this is what you do human beings need food they need water to survive they need shelter from the elements, and they need certain skills to perpetuate these things and be able to pass them down so that they can, so that these things don't become, uh, you don't end up in this, this gap where you have to relearn things. Because if, if it's lost, then th that time before you can get it back again is going to be uh, dark ages of sorts, you know, or it's going to be de highly detrimental to, to your group because not knowing how to fish, not knowing how to hunt, not knowing how to even clean and cook the game once you have it could be lethal. That's fascinating to think that that is a basic resource. The knowledge to attain the very low level things of water. Right, and we'll figure it out. We yeah. did it once before and we've done it over and over and over and over again. It's just costly. Yes, it has costs for sure. Um, but when you think of how you look at the, well, we'll just deal with the first world of the West. You look at the, the, the path line, the pathway of, of Western civilization and its growth. And then you look at how technology injected into it over time, you know, how it magnifies uh, things or how it pushes things at, at uh, orders of magnitude faster. And then the internet comes along and even faster, you know, and so you're watching industrial revolution to what is it, the, uh... All right, so right here, um, this right here, I don't have enough CPU power to render the decals that go on each one of these tiles. So we're creating this packet that has different configuration settings in it, and the first array uh, slot, the first array slot, um, or not the first array slot, uh, but CTT DexViz is the first array slot with useful information, right? So uh, CTT DexViz is this slot right here, slot number one, right? One. Uh, this is slot number two, slot two. Uh, and these are just um, indexes that are being used as enumerations to tell me where certain pieces of data are being stored. Okay. Um, so this DexViz right here stores this thing here, and that stores configuration settings about, hey, uh, what panel actually has a design visible? So if I turn this one on here, um, so we have a 3x3 three three to correspond to that 3x3. Three three. Um, we made this zero here so that we could uh, one index these locations. So things would be a little bit more friendly to us uh, when we're calculating what we're doing here. And it seems... Uh, so you see how this can be quite expensive, what's happening here, right? Um, and so it's working, though. Like, I can actually see, hey, that's actually really cool. That's, like, that's the pattern I want. That's, like, it's in the place where it's supposed to be, right? It's engraved. Um... So I would say, um, uh, 
Uh, we're just going to... Um... So in terms of what looks good here, let's just make a little table here. Right, let's make a table. And I'd say, as far as this goes, does this look like something we can do here? Does this look like, uh... So if we... I gotta zoom in here for a second. So this is like... This hole right here is like the size of a bolt. I'm gonna need a bolt, and I'm literally gonna put it up to the screen. I get a bolt and I put it up to the screen so I can have a like a hackish way to see this. I want to see it on my monitor, but to scale on my monitor, which is kind of weird. But um, we can kind of hackishly do that if we just like take the bolt that's going to go into these holes and we can just line it up. So I can just go to, I'm just going to put my, uh, my stuff here and be like, you know what? Um, I can't really tell with the with the circle, because it almost looks like to scale when I look at the circle, but then when I look at the hex head, I'm like, oh, the hex head is a little bit too small. So if we zoom in here a little bit more... So the hex head of a bolt has to actually fit in this hole. So actually, that's about to scale. That's about to scale, and if I look at this, I'm like, do any of these details look too fine grain for what we're doing here. And, um, uh, honestly, some of it kind of does. Some of it kind of looks like, oh boy, are we sure we can do this? Um, should I even make this tabletop out of wood and acrylic? Or should I just cut out all the layers out of, um, if I cut out all the layers out of, um, acrylic, I could, I could take the negative space from the pieces, right? And I could put them back in here, right? Um, that would be kind of painstaking because I'd have to make sure I don't forget any small little piece. But then we could get something really interesting. Um, that's a cool idea. And also, I want the tabletop to glow, so that would also help the tabletop glow if the whole thing is um, one, if the whole thing is transparent rather than just parts of it. Um, but I think it's also harder to do it correctly. Mm. That would be really cool because we could, um, That's just going to be really difficult. It'd be better just to fill this negative space with some type of filler. Or it's all shiny and stuff. That's going to be easier if... Oh, you know what? We can make everything plastic. Except for this last layer. Right? The last layer can be wood. Right? And that way, we have the maximum amount of light that can kind of come through here. And then we just put the, yeah. yeah. I think that'll be the best kind of scenario here. Anyway, so this is this is working, and I'm looking at this, and I'm like, you know what? That looks good. That the the details aren't too small. Like it'll it'll work out. Um, but the thing I do want to do here. 
is say, um, 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 yes, uh, panel bolts, okay. Okay, so for this section of the table design, this actually works. This actually, um, different parts of the table are going to need to, we're going to have to accommodate different sections in different ways, but, but that looks good, right? This looks good. And so what we're going to do is we're going to go through everything and uh, start just rendering uh, one square of the top at a time because... Unfortunately, we just don't have enough processing power to to render the whole tabletop. So, anyways, I'm gonna keep on listening to stuff and doing this. Uh, the capacitor and then so on. It goes further and further. And as the internet and technology, especially on the electronic side of things, start increasing in capability, it massively outpaces even our uh, necessity for it at times. It, it becomes. You know, plant obsolescence happens quicker and over and over and over again. And wealth increases, 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 increases in terms of the things that we're able to acquire, right? I mean, you, I've seen homeless people with smartphones, you know? So we're living in the most wealth-laden, luxury-laden age of all of humanity. Yet, what happens when we see calamity or people go on hard time? What are they... The things that they value, you know, what, what is, what is. What happens when we see calamity or people go on hard time? What are they, the things that they value, you know, what, what is, what do people go to an argument about the cost of things that are luxury items generally and not necessity items you know we get into fights about uh, things that are at the end of the day not necessities to us you know people are so concerned about netflix and, and the internet and uh, personally i'm very concerned about the internet because i look at it as my own little personal library of alexandria in my pocket that's what i love about it and the ability to have a tool as effective as it is even though i'm in a constant battle to not let that tool become a vice or to become something that that actually brings me to a lower state <laughs> but are we will the question is over the are we willing to murder each other over Netflix versus murder each other over water we're willing to murder each other over water that's a given right you know? but that's our animalistic selves of that well it's also a necessity for it's animalistic but it's also either you do it or you don't right like unless somebody That's our animalistic selves. Of, that's well, it's also a necessity for... It's animalistic, but it's also either you do it or you don't, right? Like, unless somebody's willing to share that water, or if that water is of such a limited uh, a ca uh, capability or of such a limited amount, then you will have to murder to have that water. And that's like the argument is the higher we get up to this hierarchy of what we consider in Los Angeles yeah. resources. Yes, we were, we're less willing to be to commit violence. Yes. We are less willing to commit violence. Than, oh, I would say over Netflix, but we are willing to commit violence over Netflix, over everything associated with Netflix. Versus murder each other over water. We're willing to murder each other over water. That's a given. Right, but that's our animalistic selves. Of that. Well, it's also a necessity for. It's animalistic, but it's also either you do it or you don't. Right? Like, unless somebody's willing to share that water, or if that water is of such a limited uh, a, a capability or of such a limited amount, then you will have to murder right. to have right, that water. Netflix, the argument is the higher 
get up to this hierarchy of what we consider in Los Angeles yeah. resources. Yes, we were, we're less we're, willing to be to commit violence. Yes. We are less willing to commit violence. Than, oh, I would say over Netflix, but we are willing to commit violence over Netflix, over everything associated with Netflix, over televisions, over sneakers, over over uh, you know. I mean, when we look at a uh, good. I mean, the majority of the stuff that came with the riots, I mean, it was used car dealership, uh, targets. I mean, and then you look and it's like, well, okay, well, what are people, what are they? That came with the riots, I mean, it was used car dealership. Uh, targets. I mean, and then you look, and it's like, well, okay, well, what are people? What do they got? What are they so hell bent to get out of this whole thing? I'm not even talking about the ideological elements or anything like that. Just like, okay, something's going on. Boom, looting, whatever. Yeah. We, you know, what, what are you gonna loot? Yeah. You know, you'll have AOC say, oh, people need bread. Yeah. You know, I mean, when we look at uh, a good. I mean, the majority of the stuff that came with the riots, I mean, it was used car dealerships, uh, targets. I mean, and then you look, and it's like, well, okay, well, what are people, what do they got, what are they so hell-bent to get out of this whole thing? I don't even talk about the ideological elements or anything like that. Just like, okay, something's going on, boom, looting, whatever. Yeah. We, you know, what, what are you going to loot? Yeah. You know, you'll have AOC say, oh, people need bread. I didn't see a single look. What, what are you gonna lose? Yeah. You know, you'll have AOC say, oh, people need bread. I didn't see a single loaf of bread. You know, I saw you know, television and poetry, shoes Josh. And, you know, but to me, it is poetry in a sense because you get to see who we, how we actually are operating. You know, what, what are, where, what is the coming first principles to most people? But wait, wait, but you could also argue that those riots were more like the madness of crowds. Which is oh, like, it's definitely a lot more than just that. I'm just saying that given a chance, it's like, okay, boom, the, the lights are off, the grid is down, you've hacked into the <laughs> system, <laughs> turn into an 80s movie, and you have the ability to go get a hold of whatever it is that you think is most important. And what do we do? And I say we, as in, you know, including all of us, Organized philosophy, or maybe uh, authentic—not authentic, the right word—but like, uh, yeah, we'll say organized. Um, I would say that Nietzsche is probably one of the people with the most influence on on me. Uh, but I also feel like, to a degree, your personality uh, will oftentimes dictate what philosophers that you can you can vibe that. with. Yeah. So what what, what I guess of whatever it is that you think is most important and what do we do and i say we as in you know including all of us we grab a tv we we attack it we we, we break into a sneaker store on melrose we do it's just like uh we still giant cause statues where the value of that is completely market driven like it's just a piece of polypropylene or whatever butyl and you know it's cool you know, i i'm a big fan of art uh, but uh <laughs> you know, I can't eat that. And at the end of the day, man, you're sitting there with your, with your like, what'd you do today, honey? What'd you get? You know, man, we, we were able to, you know, hold of whatever it is that you think is most important. And what do we do? And I say we as in. Hold of whatever it is that you think is most important. And what do we do? And I say we as in, you know, hold of whatever it is that you think is most important. And what do we do? And I say we as in, you know, including all of us, we grab a TV, we, we attack it, we, we, we break into a sneaker store on Melrose. We do, it's just like, uh, we still giant cause statues 
where the value of that is completely market driven. Like it's just a piece of polypropylene or whatever butyl, and you know it's cool. You know, I, I'm a big fan of art, uh, but uh, it's like <laughs> you know I can't eat that. And at the end of the day, man, you're sitting there with your, with your like, what you do today, honey? What'd you get? You know, man, we we were able to, you know, oh, I got this. I got this designer art statue. Are, <laughs> yeah. are, are you going to go? Well, you can't really sell it on the on like the art markets where people are really going to pay for it. Yeah. So are you going to become an underground art dealer with your one piece of cause art? One interesting thing, just, uh, before I forget it, you mentioned the Library of Alexandria yeah. and your phone. Well, your phone, <laughs> but also just thinking of your little world that you're creating for yourself on the Internet. That's a really powerful way to actually raise it. One of the things that uh, You've been on Joe Rogan several times. I'm Although always everybody always comes to me, and go, oh, that was so great! I didn't know you. You're on. You've been on Joe Rogan. I go, this is like my fifth time, dude. I've been a fan of yours for a long time from uh, from other avenues. Yeah, this is a long time coming, actually. Everybody, yeah. you have no idea, like how many times through uh, messaging and missing each other over the years. This is ridiculous. This is a long time coming. You don't realize how special this is for us. This is a, well, I'm also starstruck. We'll talk about this, but you symbolize something very important to me through my journey, through wrestling, through jiu-jitsu, through judo, through just street fighting, through just combat. There's a, you're the, in some sense, the devil on my shoulder of like, of violence in a good, in a, in, in a, Devil gets a bad rap. He does, he does get a bad <laughs> rap. I realize, you know, sitting encased in, in ice down at that, that low ass level, you know. Yeah. It, 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 <laughs> but you know, the angel side is more like the athletic sport, the science, mm -hmm. the tech, the the technical, the chess side of things. So, uh, but on the library, Alexander, let me ask, uh, be, because you were on Joe Rogan, it does make me really sad, and I realize that I'm just probably being romantic that his most of his library of interviews that were on YouTube mm -hmm. have now been taken down yeah, because he went right. to Spotify. And that was the first, I'm probably an idiot, but it was the first time I realized that this knowledge that we've been building up on the internet doesn't necessarily last forever. No, it doesn't, unless you preserve it. I mean, it's like all things. If, if you do not preserve them, if you do not make uh, efforts, um, you know, so many of my I th it just really brings to mind right off the top of my head all my uh, so many friends of uh, of mine that are so we're gonna test this one one at a time here and make sure all the panels are in the correct spot. And then after this kind of works, we're just gonna figure out how to do Etsy stuff, I think. Um, so, okay, this is kind of like some fine grain detail that kind of worries me. No, I think it'll be okay, I think it'll be okay. It's a, it's a close, it's, it's cutting it close though. It's definitely cutting some stuff close. Um, so alternatively, we could um, we could cut the whole thing out of plastic, right? And then we could just um. We could could put black plastic on the top. I just feel like I feel like the acrylic um, is going to be a safer bet when it comes to these kind of fine details. I want right. Um, Then we'll also have to make like little acrylic stubs for these holes that are going to be used to glue everything together. 
Um, that might be the best way to just, uh, the, might be the best way to keep the uniformity of this, these patterns and just be like, screw it, if some of these patterns get intersected by these bolts, then it's not a big problem until, so we can bolt this together, there's a little bit of alignment we're going to get from bolting this on here. Uh, this doesn't go all the way through here, but it's, we're not going to get as much usage out of the bolts there. So, we're going to, as long as we can slide with the, as long as we can slide with the current configuration, we're going to, we're going to mark it as like a maybe, I guess. So I'm going to mark that as a maybe. Then we're going to go down here to this next one, and we're going to steal this code again. And subtractive geometry maps, we're going to go into here, we're going to put this here, and this is uh, number 5, right, CP5, so we're going to put a 5 here. And we're going to just look at what that looks like, and then, um... All right. Um, so now the problem with this design here is that you got a lot of interference, um, with this, right, with these bolts. So, um, I'm thinking we give it, like, an inset amount, right? Like, if we can... Like, we don't want to manually adjust all of these bolts, right? Because that could just look, start to look ugly. Like, let's say we have one, two, three, four, right? And this one's just shifted over here for some reason. That's not going to look very nice. So, if we want to maintain some semblance of, hey, this stuff doesn't look crappity crap, then maybe we just want to bring in these bolts and put them over here, right? Um, so, let's say that this bolt hole clearance voids, let's um give it like an inset amount, right? So we'll say that um if we inset this by one lug, two lugs, a two lug inset on each axis, one lug, two lug, a two lug inset on each axis should be enough to uh, do what we need to do. So I'm going to go into... Um, the subs, right, the um, subtractive geometry stuff, and then bolt hole clearance voids, I'm going to put like a, um, I'm going to put an inset amount in here, and we have center, whatever the heck, um, I see three things here. Um, oh wait, this is getting mirrored radially. Oh, because we have... Because we have the center, okay, we have the center, and then we have this mirrored... Oh, that's too much. Oh, 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 hold on, hold on. Clearance voids is not what I think it is. Clearance voids is one, two, is these things down here. Um, so we don't want a clearance void in there. That's the wrong thing. Clearance void, that's, that's the underside. Um, what we want to do is, um, we want to figure out where we're getting, um, so the blanks... The blanks, so it's only the center that needs to be changed here, right? So none of these panels are a center panel. So we could easily f fix that without having to pass any extra information here, right? Because we can go find the component, right? So it's a generic component. And if we go find that center component, uh, we can see uh, we're just calling no overhang panel. Uh, it looks like we're still going to have to apply some type of inset. Um, 
So let's just say... So we need like an inset of say like this much, and then we're gonna go find that. Um, well, I see if we if we make it the we add it on as a parameter like that, we wreck everything else, don't we? Everything else will have to be refactored. And that'll be really annoying. Um. So, how about we don't do that? Let's just include it as a second parameter. Inset amount. And then, let's go into the templates. So we have a templates. And here's our no overhang panel, right? So the first thing is the layer index. And then, um, the inset amount. That's going to be in lugs. Okay. And then in here we can look for the holes, right? So um, if we look at, we got this rectangle bolt and glue fabrication hole. So these fabrication holes are the things that need their inset amount applied. So um, I, I don't know why... Oh, I can see. Okay. So yeah, we're going to take this inset amount here and this inset amount here. And then we're going to go look for this. This uh, template thing. And this will be an inset amount. And... Uh, to make it so that we don't have to break everything else, we could make this parameter optional in a way, or we could just bite the bullet and fix this and then fix it everywhere else that it starts to disappear from. I think that might be the easiest option. So this inset amount, we see offset x, y equals this kind of stuff here. And that means the inset amount needs to be just subtracted from here, right? So uh, these are already done in in lugs. So we can just do this and then minus inset amount, right? We can minus the inset amount here. And then we're going to expect this to kind of come in and we're going to expect that we're going to lose all of these holes around here because we've just kind of like broken stuff. So let's take a look at that and see how that how that looks. Okay, so all right, that's inserted nicely, and then everything else kind of got blasted away. All right, so let's go look for this. Right, let's go look for. Um, so everywhere where this is called, that's fine. Uh, but the problem is that um, this no overhang panel. Um, has the second parameter here, right? So we're gonna go look for where else we have this no overhang panel, find in files, and chances are it's being called from somewhere where it doesn't have that inset amount, right? So the inset amount here is gonna be zero, right? And then um, that's the corner. Then over here, right, the edge, inset amount is zero, and then the center, we actually pass the inset amount in. Okay, so we're just going to take that, and now we should see our holes back, but now these holes are in here, so that we have a... We have a... Uh, just a... That's not exactly what I was hoping for. Um... So, no overhang panel, 
Yep. No overhang panel. Commented out. Let's delete this if it's... Let's get rid of that noise. Um, Ladex and zero. Ladex and zero. Uh, inset them out here. That's good. So, what the heck is going on here? Um, because I see it's obviously being affected over here on the corners, right? It's like, for whatever wild-ass reason, um, we only have the, we only have the corners. Like, what's up with that? Um, and I don't know what, what's up with that. That's, like, weird. Um, the possibility could be that, um, did we not search for this in files? Uh, did we not find in files? Yeah? Okay. It's like, why is refactoring so hard? Uh, bolt and glue fabrication holes. Takes an IA. The first thing is, is we're thinking that this is just getting given some valid val invalid value. So if not IA greater than or equal to zero, or IA, right? So if neither of these are true, then we have a problem. So let's just echo, uh, bad IA. Uh, CTT I don't know we just want some type of message something in that in the console over here my very stripped down console I'm expecting to see some type of message that's gonna tell me hey yeah we're getting a bad value right and of course like right here it says bad right so so wherever this is being called from right let's go copy this and go control H and we know it's from these corners, right? So if we go find in files and we look to where um, this is being called, we can see um, the no overhang panel takes this, right? So the no overhang panel calls this. Uh, does anything else call this directly? No overhang panel. Edge. Oh, I see. Okay. Uh huh. Okay. So was that the one spot we were missing, or was there any other spot that we were missing a critical point in there? Okay. So we got that. And so really, we have to just look at the the top panel, right? So the the uh, bolt and glue fabrication holes. So in our generic panels, we just don't know what we're doing here. Um, we have to re-drill the holes, right? So in the corner, we re-drilled the holes, and then over here, we forgot to do that. So this needs to be like a zero, and we don't need to redo this, but we might as well put a zero there, right? So if we do that, then we should have all our holes back. Okay. So the next question is... Is this just a better spot for all the holes? I don't know. Let's not worry about that question just yet. Uh, let's move on to the next tile. So we want this tile right here to have a decal in it. So we gotta go into our components. And let's just close these things. If we go into our components, we're looking at the sixth component now. So CP5, we're going down to CP6. So we're going to take this thing here, go down to CP6, and then we're going to find the commented out code right here, paste that in there, and give that a rerun. And we should see, um, oh, well, not yet. This is why I do it one thing at a time, so I can make absolutely sure that every single panel is correct. Make this a 6. 
So one, two, three, four, five, six, right? So this is the sixth. And if we look at this, it's this five right here kind of throws me off. But if we look at this, right? So now we have that in place. And it does kind of seem like a lot of cases here would be better off if we just inset those panels, right? Because Right, because the edge panel here could also get a nice inset, and we would be in a better scenario here as well. Um, but... I'd like to give the inset as a parameter, right? So two, right? And then, and the components, um, we're looking at the components. Oh, these are the generic components. So if we look at the generic components, right, I'm saying that we just supply that as a third parameter. Um... If I were to rewrite this, I would say it makes more sense as a, not a third parameter, but we have settings for the panel. We have set it, these settings apply to every single panel, right? And then we also want another settings object that applies to the specific panel, and then we have the layer index, right? Um, but for now, Let's just say IA for inset amount. We'll just make an inset amount here. And then this no overhang panel here gets the inset amount, right? So we can go, so this being a zero, we can give it an IA for inset amount. And now, we should see these holes kind of inset by a little bit too. And this will get closer to here, but this should, these holes should get off of the... Um, so, oh boy, we have a whole bunch of problems now. Um, so interestingly, I see two sets of holes. Um, did not expect that. Um, is it two sets of holes everywhere or just two sets of holes here? It's just this edge panel. So I don't know what that's about. One, two, three, four, five, six. So first of all, this is number six. So first of all, we shouldn't be looking at this. Why are we looking at this? Because we should be looking at this. And yeah, we got this inset here that's like two. If we change this inset to three, do we get like, do we get a three inset, but then we also get the same holes? but a four. But yeah, this does look like, so if I put this right here, um, after it refreshes, I don't think my cursor will be in the same spot. No. So... This parameter doesn't have to be passed to here because it's it's a configuration specific to the panel itself. So when we're looking at the edge component, why the heck does it think? Um,
Well, how is this being made? Oh, I see. Um, this panel itself, for whatever reason, is also doing this, isn't it? So that means this would be, have to be IA right here, right? I don't know why that I did that, right? But but that seems to be what's going on. I, I don't know why. I think it's I think it's that the hole has to be re-drilled. Yeah, the hole has to be re-drilled. That was the case. Um, so let's close this for a second so we can reopen it because I don't know if those errors are from the current state or if they are old errors. Uh, from previous. So let's look at this and see if those errors kind of pop. Yeah, so those errors are popping up again, so let's go look at bolt and glue fabrication holes, I guess. That doesn't look like a problem. This is infuriating, I gotta say. Um, so yeah, it's that edge panel. Alright. And let's just keep on doing this, right? So, you know, if um, not IA uh, greater than or equal to zero, or IA less than or equal to zero, right? If it's not this, then it's a um, echo... And just be like, ctt com edj bad ia right. So let's see if we can find the 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 root cause of that problem. So I believe it's happening. The only thing we've edited was the edge panel. So I'm thinking that somehow a bad inset amount value is getting in here, right? So uh, ctt com edge bad ia ctt yeah. So ct Right here. So at some point we call this, and well, hold on, hold on, hold on. Okay, yeah, I see why we did it. Find in files. Uh, find. Let's find all of them for a second. So I see you with this ext when we're trying to extrude things. We're gonna call this. Um, so if we want the edge, that's going to make things very difficult if different generic edge pieces have different inset amounts. So we're going to nip that in the bud and say... Well, hold on. Um, God damn it. So I think this is all the places where that is becoming a problem. And that also does break the... 
some other stuff, but let's just worry about the main the main code working, and we may have break some other things, but let's not worry about that. Okay, yeah, so that's fixed there. And yeah, so that inset there is... It's better for some things, worse for some other things, so... Um, Well, actually, this inset was meant to be two, not not meant to be four like that, because we're messing around. So if we put that back to where we wanted it, right? Okay, so that yeah, that's much better, right? So we could have that inset like that. Okay, so let's say that in terms of what we're satisfied here with here. Um, we're going to give, this one's a yes. Let's go back to the middle for a second and see what that looks like currently. Let's try to keep all the bolts off of any designs by kind of like modifying the inset values. I think modifying the inset values is going to be the thing that's going to save us here. So this thing here, um, that's the best we can hope for. We're going to keep all the bolts, I think, in the middle because the fabrication holes is one thing, but if we, if we modify where the bolts are, that'll mean that we have to have like a different piece for the underside, and it's already enough pieces to keep track of, so let's not do that. So that looks good to me. So we're going to make that a yes now, and then we're going to go back over here. We're going to look at this, right? We're going to, we're going to inspect uh, the first kind of six pieces we worked on. Uh, because now we know that, you know, insetting is a pretty good strategy for uh, modifying where those fabrication bolts go. And we have to inset them because... Um, so right here, if we just inset this by one, we'd also be in good standing here, right? So if we... This is on a panel-by-panel panel basis, yeah. So if we look at this here, and we go back into our components... And this is one, two, three, four. This is number four. So CP4. If we look at CP4, right here. Um, this edge panel has zero inset. So let's put a one here. And if we do that, this little dot should get off of the off of the uh, the piece we're cutting, and then it should also. Um, it should just be better positioned, right? So we're going to just try to tweak that positioning a bit, right? So yeah, that looks much better. Um, it almost looks, because, like, this is not, this is right here is not ideal. It's um, definitely not ideal, but maybe we'll just have to deal with that. I don't know. But yeah, I am thinking that a wood a wood would be kind of like my best option here because I want to think in terms of like trying to make one of the tabletops that I've already seen people making money on so yeah trying to cut all this out of plastic glue it together and then put wood on the top right and then the by doing that we have to think about like what's what's our level of craftsmanship here like what are we capable of and I'm not sure that I can like um uh, right, so making a perfectly clear table is very hard with epoxy. Um, acrylic smudges a lot, right? So, um, there, to get a perfectly crystalline, clear acrylic table with without any wood is a lot harder than to make it out of wood, right? So, so I think that if we make all these layers, so one, two, three, four four layers out of acrylic, and then just the top layer is made out of wood to turn parts of it opaque, right? And then we get a lot of subsurface scatter, right? We get, like, the... Uh, we'll get, like, edge lighting, possibly, from the way we put this together. Um, so I'm still not quite happy with that. I feel like we could bring that in just a little bit more. I am scared that we're getting a little close to this, right? Getting close to the CH... Um... So, if we really want to fix this, um, 
we're going to have to have an inset um, on the X and an inset on the Y. If, we're really, if, we're, if we really want to fix this, I think. Um, or we need like a... We might as well just have an object for... Um, where the uh, hole needs to go. Um, yeah, something like if we do like a 1.2 or something, right? Like do a, a, a just a little bit of a tweak that maybe this will be inset enough to where it's not a problem, right? That's the idea. But if we do like a 1.2, right, we can get that kind of like it's close to here, right? It's close to here, but it's not. When we look at this to scale, all right, so that's about to scale. But it's cutting it pretty close. This is cutting it even closer, but it's, um, Gonna be kind of delicate, but I think that that'll be okay. It's not the best. It's not the best scenario, but I think that's acceptable. So if we go back to our little checklist here. We're saying, you know what? This is now acceptable. We can give that a Y, and then we can go to the other maybes. We're gonna go look at the other maybes and see if we can tweak those as well. And so, yeah, I do think that we can cut this out of, we can laser cut the top, right? So everything else can be plastic, and the top just needs to be laser cut wood. Um, so this right here, um, it's not really much we can do here, right? If we want to keep these bolts all in the same exact spot, then we're just going to have to uh, do this, right? And then we'll have to remember that we're going to put like a, we're going to put like wood, we'll make some wood hexagons and we'll put some wood hexagons in here to fill this area in, right? Um, yeah, I think, right, the easiest thing to do would be just be put some wood hexagons in there, right? So I'm just going to, it does kind of wreck slightly the C, right, because the C gets kind of clipped just slightly, but I'm okay with that. It's, uh, um, we got to just think about what can we do currently? What can we, what's within the, our range of abilities at this, at this moment in time, right? So at this moment in time, um, you know, this is our first product. We don't want to get too carried away. We want to, we want to think of design choices that, we can actually do, uh, which is a lot different than, right? You can code anything, right? And, but then when you get to the actual fabrication, so this is kind of like a, hmm. So how would we fix something like this? Well, here's a thought. Um, when we're fabricating this, what we could do is we could, if we're going to fabricate this so that after it's put together, it doesn't need to be, um, we can't change where these holes are, right? So I think what we could do is we could fabricate it so that the uh, the bolted the bolt is already inside of it after we after we kind of glue the whole thing together that bolt actually is just is embedded on the inside yeah that would that would uh that would actually be pretty helpful right um, Yeah, that's what we'll do. We'll make the bolt on the inside. Now, does that mean we want to, um... We 
But if that's the case, do we just want to... Now let's keep it panel per panel like this because the panels need to be small enough to cut on the laser cutter. Um, but, uh... Does that mean we want to say... If we get rid of the bolt holes here, we don't have to worry about that. Um, but we do have to worry about, okay, these holes all the way through. These are holes that are going all the way through. Should they be made out of wood or should they be made out of acrylic? What should they be made out of? Um, I guess they should be made out of wood because the top part is um, going to be wood, right? So most of the st surface is going to be opaque. So, okay, okay. So, yeah, okay, I'm good here. Let's give this a yes. And let's just remember that um, we may want to... These bolts that are going all the way through, we're going to change that design so that the, uh, the final design... Um, is going to be like, we're going to make all these prefabricated panels and the bolts are going to go, go, the bolts are going to be embedded into these panels that we're fabricating and, and, uh, yeah, the bolts are going to be embedded into the fabricated panels. That's just the way we're going to do this. Okay. So this right here is almost okay, but I feel like this could be inset just a little bit. Not too much because I'm going to hit this, but we could say, if we go take this, let's go look at our, our things. This is the top left, right? So CP1, and we have the corner, and the corner doesn't take an inset variable right now, so we have to give it an inset variable. We're going to say the inset variable is like maybe, uh, one is actually too much, like 0 0.4, 0 0.5, uh, 0 0.5 is probably good. Good enough to get it away from what we want without getting it too close to the text. Um, so we gotta go look at this corner thing, and the corner is in our generic stuff, so let's go look at this. Uh, corner. I'm just gonna change the formatting here. Okay. And then we're gonna call this inset amount. And this could blow up, this could blow up some of our other stuff. Um, but, um, so if uh, not IA uh, less than or equal to zero, or IA greater than or equal to zero. So we're just going to figure out what's going on here. Echo, uh, CTT, com, core, bad, IA. So if we forget this parameter, we're going to see that in the console. And we can immediately kind of fix all these sites right now before, before we start adding it in, right? Fix the problem now. Yeah, so we see this all over the place. Uh, chances are where that's coming from is it's coming from the components that are using the corner piece, right? So this doesn't have any inset level, right? So we got to put a zero there. This doesn't have any inset level, got to put a zero there. Um, this, yeah, this doesn't have any inset level either, but I'm going to put a zero there. Okay, so now one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Why is that inset differently? So for whatever reason, I decided for this to put my rotation over here, not consistent with the way that I did it in the other code. So let me put that back. Okay. And, okay, much more consistent format. Okay, so let's save that. And now I'm not expecting to see any errors in the console, but we still have to implement it, right? So I just wanted to stub in the parameter and make sure that the new parameter is being used properly in all call sites, okay? And now that we have that, we just, the thing I'm worried about is this. This little dot here is a little bit too close to there. So now that we have this inset amount, we see no overhang panel. And then we have the glue and fabrication holes. So both of these need to be an IA, right? So this has to be IA. 
And the reason why um, this has to be IA is um, this is re-drilling the holes. Um, re-drill holes in... Right, so this is re-drilling the holes that were in um, no overhang panel. And that's why we're um, seeing that IA there. Uh, that just has to do with the way I construct constructed this, like composited everything together. So if we do that, we should see this kind of back off a little bit, hopefully. And then we'll move on to the last three panels that we've been kind of tweaking. So that is, you know, that's good enough. I think that's good enough there. I think, um... Um, I think it's time to move on to the next things. So, let's go up here, and let's put this to a zero, and let's put this to a one. So if we put this to a one, uh, we shouldn't see anything here yet, because uh, we haven't implemented that. So on the seventh thing, the seventh thing is what we need to look at. And before, we're going to take this from the, from the sixth thing, we're going to take this code, we're going to steal it. And then we're going to put it over here, right? And so this should be a 7, right? Because here's a 7, here's a 7, right? So if we take that, now we should see the, we should see the, actually, hold on, is that correct? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, yeah, we should see, like, the decal here now, right? So, and then once we get this done, we're going to try to just throw up some other stuff on Etsy or something. Uh, because this is going to take too long to finish. Um, like, we got a lot of parts cut, but it's, it's still a long way in the making, unfortunately. Um, so that actually looks, that looks acceptable. That's fine the way it is. So that's, like, best case scenario. I like how the molecule, the bolt, kind of, like, fits right in there. So it's, like, it just, that just ends up working very nicely. But yeah, so this one here, that's a, that's a yes. Let's go down here. Let's go back to our components, and let's uh, steal this code here, right? We're going to steal this code, and then we're going to put it over here where this was commented out. This is number 8 now. So in order for this to work, we have to have an 8 there. Save that, and now we're going to see this middle bottom panel. We're going to see the, or center bottom, uh, whatever. It's on the bottom, within, between the left and right on the bottom. I don't know what you want to call it, how you want to position it. Um, it has an index position of 8, right? So, uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, right? So this is kind of... These bolts aren't in the way. This bolt is very much in the way, but that's why I'm saying when we composite these together, um, we embed the bolt into the, into the, uh, into the panel. And then we don't have to worry about that. So, um, because also this hole has to go, okay, cool, we made sure that was a hex hole on the, all the way to the bottom, okay, cool. So, in this case, it's not too much of a problem, but yeah, if we made the very, the very top hole, Yeah, we can, we can give it wiggle room, right? We can just embed it, right? So it can still be hollow there, that's fine. Let's move on to the next thing. All right, so this is eight, right? And so the next thing is nine. So let's go down here and just find where nine goes. So in here, this was commented out. This needs to be a nine. So save that. And then we're gonna go up here. We're not up here. I'm gonna go up here and we're gonna mark this as a yes. We're gonna unmark this one, right? So we're gonna unmark this one. And then we're going to mark this one. And now if we run that, and I wish it didn't automatically reload like that, because that's um, not correct. Um, 
I don't know where I got this idea to reload like that. Didn't I tell it not to do that? Um, so, design automatic reload and preview. Let's turn that off because that's going to screw with us, right? Um, because we had to wait longer. Okay, so that looks good. So, now the thing is, is that we cannot, unfortunately, get away with rendering all of this. Like, I saw it. Well, well maybe if we're lucky, maybe my computer at home is faster, but I, I doubt it has the... Um, there seems to be some type of maximum... Um, let's just re-render this. There seems to be, like, some maximum that I hit, and then it just it blows up in my face. So, if we can get everything, I guess we can try for it. But, um... What the fucking hell? Uh, okay. Oh, so I have to actually press F4 if I want to do that. So this is not a reload and preview, huh? Oh, no. So I have to do F4 to do that. Okay, so let's do F4. F4. And then I'm expecting here, here, and here. I'm expecting those diagonals to render. And I think I can get, I can pull this off. It's just that as we as we try to do any anything more than that, we're gonna find ourselves in some. We're gonna find ourselves having issues. Yeah, like this is gonna take. Yeah. So if it takes this long, the reason why it takes this long is because the whole entire decal has to be re-rendered for every single one of these things, right? Because the decal goes over this entire surface, and just the way the functional programming works for this, uh, we have to render... For this here, we have to render the entire decal to get the decal, how it stamps into there, right? And then we have to do that for every single panel. So to make that decal overlay that goes over the entire table, um, and to have it correctly positioned into each panel, um, just as yielding a lot of problems for us. So, what we're going to do here is we're going to, um, we're going to get, like, kind of close, right? And we're going to just, uh, we're just going to screenshot this. We're going to, we're going to snip this, and then we're going to, um, take the other other cells, right? So three, three, and three. So we're going to take this three, then this three, and this three, I guess. So um, maybe not the best way to do that, but um, let's just let's just steal them. So let's steal this. And we're going to go into... Um, We need to go into the... We're actually still working off our shop file, so... And the utility patent in the models folder, in the coffee table, caffeine table. Uh, we're just gonna go, um... Um... Dot. One of three. So, CTT file, render component, one of three, right? So let's save that. And what we're going to do is we're going to make sure not to adjust this at all, right? So we don't want to zoom in there out. And we just want to go back into the code here, and we just want to say, okay, the next thing we want to do is we want to take this kind of corner down here, right? Because we decided to be weird about the way we're going to do this. And it looks like if we do... 
If we do three at a time, it looks like we can get three at a time, but I really doubt that we're going to be able to get four at a time. So we're going to have to um, do this four at a time here. And also, how long have I been recording for? Because I think one hour is not correct. One hour, 40 minutes. Okay, more like it. Okay. So, are we still waiting? Yeah, we're still waiting. Okay, cool. So now we got these other corners, so we're gonna snip these. And this is not- this is not the way I would like to do this. This is like the- the lowest of the low attack ways that we could get this done. But, um, we gotta work with what we got here. So, file, um, save as. And we'll save this as two of three, right? Two of three. Save. Close that. Then we'll go over into our settings again, right? Here's our settings, where we control the visibility of that tabletop, right? And we'll render this corner now, because uh, we're being weary about this, because like I said, we don't have enough rendering capability to get everything, so we're just stuck this way, unfortunately. Um, now, I'm pretty sure I didn't resize the viewport for these last two, but I'm worried about the one in the middle. So when we go start cropping these images, we're going to crop um, the first one last in case we have to re-render that. And we'll find out as we're doing stuff in paint.net if that is the case. So well, that looks good. Let's snip this. And... We're going to take this, three of three. Okay, now we're going to close this. We're going to go open up paint.net. And we're just going to composite all those together. Uh, because, I mean, we got a pretty good idea of what that looks like anyways, but it'd be nice if we could, you know, composite them all together. So let's go look at the, um, once again, we're still in this multi-boot. Uh, we're in the thumb drive we use at the machine shop right now, so uh, the root folder is different than what we're used to. I should have just moved it all over, but it was currently broken from doing stuff at the shop when I was when I was working on it, and that's kind of like how I ended up where I am right now. So this thing right here, we're going to open this up, and we're just going to crop it. We're going to crop it because I think if we... If we crop it, I think that we can get kind of a pixel-perfect crop here. So, oh, so close. Perfect. Okay, so we're good there. And then we're just going to go over here, and we're going to get a pixel-perfect crop going on over here. All right, like that. Bam. Steal that. Uh, then we're going to go file... File new. 599 by 599. Okay. And we're going to save this as um, CTT final. Uh, uh, rend comp RC for render component. Or. Rec for render component, or, uh... Let's call it RC for uh, render component, and then we'll go 01 of 03.png. Okay. So we're going to go do that to the to the other ones, right? And so we're expecting exactly 599 by 599 for these things, from what we've seen earlier. So we're gonna go to number two now, and we're just gonna do the same kind of cleanup process here, right? And right, and so the only reason we're doing this, the only reason we're creating these images is so that we can get a good idea of, we just wanna get a good idea of if everything, we wanna spot check this visually, right? We want a visual, confirmation that all these pieces are going to fit together how we think they are, right? So file, new, 
599, but 599, excellent. So put that there. Uh, file save as, and we're gonna just say uh, RC uh, 01 of 03. This is 02 of 03. And actually, we have screwed up here. Don't save. Uh, we've already screwed up here because if we look at these images, uh, view preview pane. If we look at the preview pane, three-way bottom corner, top corner. These are the, here's our bottom corner, here's our top corner. Top corner, bottom corner. Um, so this right here, we got these numbers wrong. So the diagonal is number one. Okay, two is this, two, three. This is two, this is three. Okay, so rename that for a second. This is three of three, F5. Okay, so if we look at this, right, so it's from here to here, right? So bottom corner, top corner, two and three. Bottom corner, top corner, two and three. Okay, so now we just gotta open this one. And this is the first one that I was thinking, hey, I'm not sure if we, I, I feel like we may have changed the camera slightly accidentally, like just giving it a little jostle accidentally. So we're going to have to just take this and hope that we get 599 by 599 and we're done here, but I don't know. File new, 599 by 599, excellent. So save this and we're gonna save it as one of three, right? So one of three. Okay, and then we're going to close this, close that, don't save, and uh, new, and it's going to be 599 by 599. We're going to open up the components here, so these components here, and we're going to create, uh, you know, a few different layers, oh, not here, a few different layers here, so we're just going to boom, 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 right, and then we're going to paste the appropriate things, control A, control copy, close. Control V. Okay. Uh, control A, Control Copy. Close that. Go back over here. Control V. Uh, hide these. Go over here. Control A, Control Copy. Close. Go over here. Control V. Okay, so now the next thing is um, to get this all to show up. Um, I'm thinking maybe we just additively blend it together and that should be kind of like probably good enough Right, maybe not the maybe not the best but um, Good enough to kind of have a visual confirmation that everything is Good enough to have a visual confirmation that everything is kind of like where it should be right so if we look at this we can see hey look everything kind of lines up here and, oh boy, that's kind of crazy looking. Um, that's a pretty good idea of what the table's going to look like, right? So, um, we're going to make the top out of wood. And then we're going to stain the wood black or something so that the, uh, the, uh, the artwork can kind of glow through here a little bit better. Um, yeah, I think that's pretty cool. Okay, so let's uh, save this. File, save as, and caffeine tabletop, huh? Um, Flatten that. Okay, we're gonna close this, and we're gonna get rid of these long-handed things that aren't cropped, right? They're no use to us. So just remove that. Okay, let's kind of check out the gallery of, oops, wrong thing. 
Um, let's check out the gallery of what we have kind of in here, in this folder here. So we have this thing, that's cool. Uh, we got this thing, right? And so we're trying to figure out this right now, right? Um, and so this is... Right, we blended those together. And when we put them all together, we get kind of this thing, right? So, imagine, if you will, um, this in 3D, right? So that kind of engraved on here. And that looks pretty good. So, let's go take this and, I don't know, throw it into the self-promotion uh, Discord, because why not? And then we'll have to figure out what we're going to do next, because I don't think we have the... I don't know. Um... So, it'd be interesting to actually get some opinions on this on Discord. Um, www.face, uh, w, uh, Josh chat. So let's go on to Discord, go find the self-promotion channel, um, and put this new thing. Um, and... Uh, uh, reply. Uh, nope. Um, only graphics. I figure when I get some. No, no. No. Okay, so let's go into the self-promo channel here, and, um, let's just throw in, um, I don't know what folder's gonna open if I try to open this here, so let's go, okay, nothing bad, okay, so let's go over here, and let's throw that in here, and so it's in the multi-boot thing, because we haven't synced with our with our computer yet. Um, but yeah, so models, and then the co the caffeine tabletop, and we have the final composite, right? So, um, so let's open that. Uh, um, bam, bam. We cut all, all, nine of these panels, bolt them into the final table design, and then once bolted into place, uh, cover with epox epoxy turning with the epoxy making the entire table top one surface. Uh, um, kinda, kinda weird. Weird to, to go modular, but then glue it together. Mm. Uh, 
Um, also, Okay, yeah, so, um, yeah. Um... Uh... White holes... You see... Are because... The table's thickness... Is from multiple... Razor cut cross sections... And... Final one one ninth panels are created by gluing plus bolting those cross sections. Okay, so anyways, yeah, we'll just throw that on there and see if maybe somebody has any advice, because I, I, I don't know. Um, but, yeah, we got a good idea of how we're going to go about this, but we're really, we're really running out of time in terms of, in terms of, uh, how long, yeah, we're just running out of time, man. Um, so... We're gonna, um, we're gonna commit what we have, right? We're gonna commit what we have to, so in our utility patents here, we're gonna go get bash here, and we're gonna go push this up. Um... Um, uh, maybe remove bolt central bolt holes from the top. So I'm thinking that maybe we want to remove the bolt hole from the top and just uh, kind of cover it up. Um, but before we even get into that, we just want to, um, yeah, that's a lot of, get, get push. Yeah, there, we're really close to having that design kind of, kind of finished, uh, figured out. Um, but, uh, but we got more to do. We got we got more to do with that. So um, let's close this, and then let's sync up with our main our main kind of thing here. Let's close this. So let's go into the 
uh, UPAT folder right here, right, which is the same exact folder, except it's on a different drive. And we're going to go find the caffeine table. Actually, no, we're going to just go to the brute. My bad. And we're just going to do a git bash here, and we're going to sync up with what we just pushed up to GitHub. So git status. Hopefully there's no changes here, because that could create some problems. Git pull. Nope. So we're going to pull from what we just pushed up to GitHub so that we're in sync. And then before we go, before we go, we're actually going to count some of our parts, right? So we had some parts that um, we hadn't, have not counted yet. We didn't take inventory. Uh, we cut some parts yesterday. We didn't take inventory. We cut some parts today. We have more parts. So I'm going to, um, I'm going to start taking, um, I'm going to go find those parts.
let's uh go edit the after shop uh inventory or something whatever you call it uh, it's not really called after shop inventory we called it something else so let's say you know after shop inventory uh that's not what we call this uh after shop counting shop counting uh, part inventory. Okay. So, yeah, it's called after shop summary is what it was called. So let me put this over here and I'm going to take the things that I typed and I'm gonna and I'm gonna put them in my shortcuts. Uh, you want after shop summary? I don't know if after shop summary is a shortcut that is all underscored yet. Yes, it is. Okay, cool. So we're also going to call this ASSTXT for Aftershop Summary TXT. Um, and then we all can also make a note of this. ASSTXT means uh, ASSTXT means and then ASS-TXT means, right? So after shop summary. Uh, text file. Okay, so anyways, in our summary, uh, yesterday was the, today is the 6th, um, yesterday was what, Friday? Yesterday was Friday, I actually missed the shop on Friday. Um, so, 4th, 5th, 6th, right? So we gotta go, uh, 4th, 5th, 6th. And O three, O four, O five, O six. Today is the sixth. Uh, yesterday I missed, right? So we're gonna just strike this out here and say missed. This is a, this was a miss here, right? Um, the f the actually no, not here was a miss. Sorry. Uh, yesterday was the fifth, right? Yesterday was the fifth. That was a miss. Um, so we're going to take this 4th, 5th, and 6th, and we're going to paste it um, into each of the different color sections. And we really only cut, those are all black pieces. So when we're looking at our table, the first table here is our black. And what we've added, uh, this is parts that were cut. These aren't the parts from the 6th, though. These are the parts from the 4th. So these are parts from the fourth, and um, they're corners, so corner of style two, and there's 12 of them. So we're going to go 0, 0, 12, 12 parts total of corners, and that puts us at a 2 here, so that puts us at 28, that puts us at 30, right? Uh, yeah, that puts us at 30 corners, so we have all the corners that we need, cool. And then the pickaxes, we don't really know how much we need for those. We're just counting them. Um, there are these very small parts that I'm sure we'll have enough of. Um, after we have everything else cut that we need, I'm sure we'll have enough of those. So the um, so these are the axes, and these are the axe picks. Uh, pickaxe or axe pick. Yeah. Uh, AKA uh, pickaxe. Okay, so axe pick, picks axe. Um, obviously, I couldn't make up my mind on that. So this thing right here, this part, I have 15 of them. So I'm just going to mark this as 15. And then adding 15 to here, uh, that's um, 21, 26, right? So we got 26 of how many total? I don't know how many we need there. Um, so if we look at our totals here, um, 
we want to make sure that all these numbers are higher than the numbers that are down here. And once that is the case, then we have everything we need to make the frame of the table. We don't even have the panels cut yet. So um, if we look at, uh, yeah, we don't even have any four ways. We're thinking that instead of making four ways, we're going to make a special type of corner. And we're going to use that special corner type um, to create the to create the panels that we need. Um, or sorry, to create the four ways, we're going to use like um, eight corner pieces, but not these corner pieces. We're going to use a, a more regular corner piece for that to composite together corner pieces. And uh, what else? Um, I don't know, I think that's good. Um, so, also I wonder what happens when you epoxy together acrylic. That would be a lot of epoxy though. Epoxying two acrylic sheets together. Oh, what would happen? Yeah, so I know, like, usually you weld together acrylic. But I'm just wondering about what, what happens if you use, like, acrylic with uh, epoxy. Interesting. If you sand the acrylic and the area you are bonding uh, to, you will get a good mechanical bond. The rougher, the better. Interesting. So they're saying, they're saying, you know, if you want this to work out, um, sanding the acrylic before you. Sand the acrylic before you uh, uh, bond it together, uh, which that might actually be in my advantage because then we'll get kind of like a frosted pattern, and the frosted pattern will kind of like hide. Um, if we have like uneven gluing, if there's a, if it's frosted, it'll it'll hide that a little better. Um, so I'm just gonna make a note of this, right? So. Um, I'm going to put this in my shortcut files and my URLs. Um, I guess technically it's like um, fabrication. And it's epoxy and acrylic. Okay, epoxy and plexi. Full file path clipboard. Okay, yeah, so I'm just gonna take that note and I'm gonna put it into my shortcuts here. I'm just gonna say epoxy and acrylic, acrylic and epoxy. Also epoxy and um, plexi. Lexi and epoxy, or um, Lexi and epoxy, epoxy and plexi, uh, also epoxy and plexi glass, uh, plexi glass and epoxy, right? So make those things here. And then uh, edit file, right? So SC files, blah, 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 edit file. Okay, cool. So we have that kind of for reference. And uh, it seems that, yeah, it can be done. Uh, tip, pro tip, uh, sand, 
surface before bonding. So yeah, we gotta sand the surface before we bond it. Good to know. And anyways, I'm gonna go find my other inventory. So my other inventory is upstairs, so I'm gonna go upstairs really quick and I'll be right back. Um, so hold on. Okay, so, got some more parts. I'm just gonna count them out. Um,
So, going back to this table here, um, we missed the fifth, so it's the sixth we're looking at here, and it's the black part, so this is the table we're looking at here, and we know that the corner ways, so this, these type of, this style of corner here, we cut 17 of them, so we're going to put 17 here, and then that puts this at 47, right? So we have, um... We have more than we need, right? So 30, 40, 47. Yeah, 47. And then the two ways, if we look at the two ways, so here's two ways. And we've cut uh, eight of those today. Or, yeah, today? Yeah, that's actually from today, right? Yeah, those are, these are from today. Um, and uh, that puts us at um, 202, right? Yep, 202. Which is more than we need. And they're just the easiest to cut because they're they're just the bounding box of a rectangular long piece as well. Uh, it's well the bounding box doesn't have any wasted material, right? So otter shaped things have to be cleverly packed in order to cut them, and so it's easier to cut these, and that's kind of why a lot more of these have been cut than needed. Um, but yeah, those are the yeah we have enough of these. Um, the three ways we don't have enough of yet, and if we look at the axe pick, so the axe pick, we don't even know how many of these we need. Um, we're thinking that we don't, it, it could be very dependent, but, uh, we know we have ten more, right? So we can put 36 here. So if we look at the totals here, let's take a, let's take a eyeball at these totals. Um, the only thing that needs our attention here... Um, so, this needs our attention, right? So, we gotta cut a few more of these. Uh, the four ways, we either need to cut four ways, or we could optionally, um, we could optionally cut, um, hold on. So, what else do we not have? So, the, the other thing we could do here is... And now we're kind of like off our rocker here with totals here, but oh well. Um, let's fix that. Do we think we're ever going to get over 999? Actually, we could actually end up with over 999 really quick. Um, so over here, actually, let's try not to do that though. Okay, let's try to take these columns here for this stuff and edit them so that we can get... R we're running out of space in our little table here. So we're running out of column space. So let's see if we can just kind of clean this up a little bit um, so that we can... That looks a little bit better. <laughs> Missed. Missed. So we missed this day. Um, yeah, so let's just try to clean up more of this. Let's try to go in here, kind of like slice this out of here, right? So these zeros here can be sliced out of here, right? This is a zero in the zeros place. I don't think we're going to get up to ni uh, past 9.99. Uh, we could, and then we'll have to figure that out. But I think for most things, I don't plan on going that high. I think that. If we've account if we've accumulated that many pieces and we haven't actually liquidated them, then then we have an inventory problem, right? We shouldn't have that much inventory without having sold anything. Um, so we're just making this a little bit shorter so that we can um, so that we can put in our notes that um, um, Uh, corners. These are corners original. Original corners. And we could say, um, corner style original. So if we see CO, um, so if we see a CO here, this is, um, So 
So we might want to make this kind of more obvious. Because this is going to start to be very hard to read pretty soon. Um, but uh, we have a K in front of these, right? So K this, K that, K that, right? So KCO, KCO is down here. KBA, right? CAX, CAP, right? They all are just K for... Uh, So K is black. C is clear. And B is blue, right? So when we're looking at the, the letter prefixes, right? Now it's black, blue, and clear. Black, blue, and clear, right? So we go from adding wavelengths of light until we get to clear, right? So clear is like your white, blue is just blue wavelength, black is no wavelength, so uh, I just want to order things in a way that kind of makes sense. So right now, these prefixes here for the other colors are still have like an underscore between them, which actually makes it easier to read. Um, right, so this right now is B this, and then we also have, um, this here is, clear, so right, so these are all the prefixes, right, so if we go over here and we try to look for that, you know, we can find it down there in that table, right? Okay, so anyways, uh, blue, and this is clear. Okay, so anyways, I'm just cleaning that up. So this is the original corner style, right, the original corner style, and uh, we could use um, we could use 16 of these corners to get what we need. Or what we could do is we could double that. Um, And I don't know if it'll be strong enough, um, but we could optionally, um, hold on, what's not, what's not lined up here? This is not lined up. Um, we could, we could optionally take this, and instead of doing 16, we do 32 of these, right? We double it. Um, so right here, um, uh, we can use one or the other, right? One or the other. Right, so over here, we have one or the other, right? So we can either use 16 of these, or we can double it and use these corners to get what we need, right? And so we're going to put some exclamation marks up above this, just so that we can see kind of like those parts that still need some attention. Um, so we're really close to getting what we need. And, and I would say that, yes, we can cut all the parts we need, but it takes about a month. Um, because if we look at our calendar, if I look at my calendar, I can see I got, like, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. I got, like, 11 days left, so you could say, like, 3, yeah, uh, um, yeah, rounding to a month would be a safe estimate, right? So if we look at kind of, like, how we've been doing things, uh, if we really roughly estimate here, we're, t we're like, uh, 10 short here. So maybe in one day we can get this. If we get this, we don't have enough, right? So the minimum amount that we've cut in a day of this part at any, at any given point in time looks like 10. So we could say that uh, 10 is going to make us fall short, so we got two days here. So we're going to do a conservative estimate, right? So we're going to blow this estimate uh, higher up than, rather than lower down and say, okay, two more days for this, right? And then we don't even have any estimates on this. Um, but yeah, saying that, um, 
every 10 pieces taking about um, two days or actually 10 pieces a day would be good right 10 pieces a day yeah um, so two days here two days here and then here is like if we want these as well to experiment um, three days but we're gonna round up because we got two here uh, so two two four days uh, five, six, seven, like eight days, right? So, yeah, like uh, another another week, basically, right? So, yeah, saying that this was going to take about a month to cut this whole table was not an exaggeration. Um, and we're going to uh, we're going to round up because you know sometimes stupid stuff like this happens, right? You miss this day or you miss this day, and so if you have your calculations super tight, uh, where you don't have any wiggle room in your estimates, um. You don't have any padding in your estimates, um, then anything going wrong at all uh, is going to destroy you, right? Unless, I guess maybe you could do a different style of estimating, right? You could create like very sharp on the nose estimates, and then you could maybe um, say, I want it done at exactly this day, but I'll give myself. Um, like a, an intentional one week padding in case I don't make that deadline in case certain things come up um, you could do it that way I don't know uh, I think that's more energy intensive mentally and that's why I don't estimate that way right you just round things up liberally while you're estimating um, okay yeah so I think that's fine for now I think that is, um, we got a good thing here. Uh, now the next thing is, is that I need to, well, first of all, is the R drive? Yeah. I need to commit those numbers. Get status, get add dot, get commit dash am, uh, shop totals. Okay. And the next thing we want to do is um, figure out, um, there's no way we're going to have a table done in time, okay? So if you look at this, it t take us a month to, to do the frame, and we still have to do the top of the table, right? And, we, and we're going to like composite it out of a whole bunch of materials and glue it all together and layer epoxy on it and hope that that final design just looks good right we're gonna like wing it we're gonna like stain the wood black throw some shiny epoxy on it and hope we get something that looks good enough to sell right so uh that's pretty risky so now what i want to do is just go on go and figure out what i'm gonna do on um what i can try to sell on etsy and i'm gonna have to start to remember to log into etsy every day and I just gotta figure that out. So the next thing on my agenda is um, just make a note here. Okay, so I will be, I'll be back later, I don't know, maybe, or maybe I won't, I don't know, uh, but I'm done for now.